All right, chapter seven, all day I dream about beats. My bedroom was beginning to look like a bona fide studio, which was fitting because all I did day and night was dream about making music. There were wires snaking everywhere and machines. Most of them bought secondhand stacked around my bed more and more often. As soon as school was out, people would drop by to listen to me make my beats and mixtapes for parties. One afternoon, Pharrell swung through. Whoa, when did you get this? He said, running his fingers along my new AS, <laughs> ASR-10. That's my baby, I said with a smile. We're about to get it on for real. I can start making some serious beats now. You've got to let me check this out, Pharrell said. Taking in the sleek console, the ASR-10 purchased courtesy of my Liberty Mutual checks was the finest piece of recording equipment any of us owned. Thoughts on what you just read. Could you relate to that? Um, man, you know, getting getting your hand on any equipment, man, that's, you know, something new, something fresh, and you know that you're going to be able to build an empire or build a sound or build anything, man, like, that, I think that's something. It, it just builds your creativity. It's just like when I got my first mixer, got my first set of turntables, you know, or upgraded from a set of turntables to, you know, the techniques or the NS7s from an NS6. So just upgrade anything, man. It just gives you more of a motivation to just grow and just do something dope because you got more of, you got more options. You got more of a bigger opportunity because you have more stuff to, to drive with and to build with. So by, you know, that, that whole passage is like, he's basically saying, yo, I gotta have this. This is dope. I'm about to make some fire. Ain't nobody going to see me when I get my hands on this. That's how I feel about what he's saying. I think he's feeling like he's got some. He got this masterpiece in his hand where he's finna just take over the game. What about the home studio? What was your first studio like? Man, I'm still at the house. <laughs> yeah, man. I um, I mean, I go to the studio from time to time, but that's the, that's the thing. A lot of people don't understand that you don't have to have $100,000 worth of equipment to make a nice beat or make a dope beat or make a beat worth being on the radio. Man, you got... Famous rappers still recording in the house. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the studio is, is cute. It, it looks nice. It's you know I I would like I'm, I'm, that's my dream. You know I definitely got to own my own studio. But you don't have to have those things to get started. You know what I'm saying? I started off in the basement. Started off in the house like a small house, just making beats over and over until I mastered it. You know, so you don't have to have all the finer things to you know to to create your dopeness, man. Your, your sauce is always gonna be there if you just find it. You gotta find yourself. Now what about, uh, in the in the paragraph you read, mm -hmm. with a couple paragraphs, uh, he mentioned Pharrell. So obviously he was working with Pharrell back when he was getting started. Right. Were you the type that was working with other producers when you first started, or were you more like the loner type, just by yourself, or what? I was by myself. Yeah, I was a loner. Uh, man, I mean, I know that was like a, like a, a a dream team, Timberland and Pharrell. I'm a huge fan of Pharrell and Tim. Um, but uh, yeah, I started off by myself, man. I'm, a, I'm one of those producers, at least I was, I would like to be by myself. I don't really like any distractions. I don't mind any um, criticism, you know, um, constructive criticism at all, but I kind of like to do my own thing. I like stuff to sign my own way. Not to say that I won't, I collab with a lot of producers, man, but I kind of do my own thing for the most part.